Hello, I'm David Chaston with 90 at 9, brought to you by interest.co.nz. This week, get everything you need to know in 90 seconds at 9 o'clock, with news regulators are on the back foot in both China and Europe. But first, as expected, the US Fed increased its official rate today by 25 basis points. They also signalled they will be raising rates faster in future than they had previously expected. They planned three 2017 rises. There are more details about the decision and the rationale on the story below. US advanced retail sales for November showed them at 3.8% higher than the same month a year ago, but level pegging with October, and that was lower than expected. It was car sales that took the shine off the month-on-month -month data. US industrial production, as reported by the Fed survey, showed some unexpected weakness as well, although previous data was revised higher. Capacity utilisation also fell more than expected. These two data releases have shifted the forecast for US fourth quarter growth down to 2.4% per, per year. In China, it has been becoming clear that regulators there have been unsuccessful reigning in their shadow banking sector, and a renewed spurt in credit expansion from this source is a growing threat to Chinese financial stability. In Europe, Greece's creditors have suspended proposed debt relief measures after the Greek government surprised them by announcing it would boost welfare payments for low-income pensioners, a sign of escalating tensions over the country's bailout. And that's a deal that was signed only just on December the 5th. And in the UK, they are moving to make loans provided by the Bank of Mum and Dad subject to their inheritance tax. This is not a risk in New Zealand because we don't have death duties or an inheritance tax. And staying in the UK, their central bank is wrestling with the issue where major banks compute their own risk-weighted capital requirements, whereas the smaller banks have to go with the higher default levels. This creates a strong competitive advantage for the majors and is a distortion that we have here as well. The Brits, like, the Brits look like they want to give the smaller banks the advantage of lower capital levels for mortgages rather than raising capital to more sensible levels for the majors. In Australia, traditional retailers are feeling the squeeze. Consumers are feeling uncertain following the surprise fall in third quarter GDP, and everything is now on sale. The Boxing Day sales markdowns are in full swing in the prime holiday selling period. It's not a good look and re reveals a surprising leakage of confidence. And in other news, after a successful rollout in Pittsburgh, Uber has launched self-driving cars in San Francisco, and Amazon has made its first package delivery by drone. In Amazon's case, it was 13 minutes from the customer order to the delivery of the goods. In New York today, the US Treasury 10-year yield has jumped to 2.5% on the Fed decision to go for a faster set of hikes. The oil prices have fallen overnight, now just under $52 a barrel for the Brent for the US benchmark, while the Brent benchmark is just under $55 a barrel. OPEC has warned that, may, that their oversupply situation may remain unless output cuts are deeper than many members are expecting. And oil demand is changing quicker than expected as the components of world economy change to less energy intensive industries. The gold price is up $7 to $1,163 an ounce, and the New Zealand dollar is lower on the Fed announcement, but up against most other currencies. Now it's 71.9 US cents. On the cross rates, it's at 96.2 Aussie cents, and against the euro, it's up to 67.8 euro cents, which is a 20 month high. The TWI is at 77.9. I'm David Chaston. That was 9 brought to you by interest.co.nz.